Welcome to the Dizziness Summit. I'm here today with Dr. George Michaelopoulos. Dr. George Michaelopoulos is a lead clinician and owner of the Neurologic Wellness Institute in Wooddale, Illinois. Today, Dr. George is going to talk about cervical dizziness. Thanks for being here, Dr. George. Thanks for having me, Dave. So let's get right into it. What is cervical dizziness? Well, uh, cervical dizziness is uh, basically dizziness that comes from the neck, usually comes from sometimes from uh, motor vehicle accidents or whiplash injuries uh, without the involvement of brain injury. So Dr. George, how long ago did you learn about cervical dizziness? Well, I've been practicing for uh, 30 years uh, now. So when, when I went to school 34 years ago when I started, uh, we had learned um, that uh, cervical dizziness had come from you know neck injuries and muscle and joint pain. So for the first about 18 to 20 years of my career, I would treat it um, uh, musculoskeletally. Um, and then about uh, 12 years ago, I, I learned a little bit more um, of the Carrick Institute in chiropractic neurology. And so I went, I uh, actually did a lot more uh, uh, schooling there. Uh, I, I learned that there's more involvement to cervical dizziness uh, than just musculoskeletal. There's also inner ear involvement, visual involvement, uh, balance involvement, and, uh, and a lot of other components uh, to, to people that actually wouldn't get better from, from dizziness uh, the, the traditional way that I was treating them. So, Dr. George, what kind of dizziness can people get if they have cervical-type dizziness? Well, there's not really one, uh, um, you know, one component for cervical dizziness. Some people feel like they may be swaying back and forth. Some people feel like they're rocking. Some people feel that there's waves in, the, uh, uh, in their visual system. Other people think that the room is spinning. Uh, some patients feel that they're spinning. So there's so many, there, there's quite a few different components uh, to cervical dizziness. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the difference of how you treat somebody with cervical dizziness maybe 20, 30 years ago compared to how you're treating them now in your office? Well, uh, it's definitely changed quite a bit uh, from 20, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, we would treat them, you know, the, the, the traditional chiropractic way we do, uh, a, you know, cervical exam, a neck exam. Um, treat them with possibly electrical stimulation, ultrasound, get those neck muscles nice and relaxed. We could do manipulation of the cervical spine, maybe the uh, mid-back, um, and then maybe refer them to physical therapy for strengthening and rehabilitation for the neck and, and, and uh, uh, upper back regions. Uh, now, we treat them in a much different fashion. We, we do a, a very comprehensive neurologic evaluation, which includes um, uh, VNG, which is called the video nystagmography, where we'll look at their eyes and see what's going on with their eyes. We'll look at their inner ear and see what's going on there. We may do uh, visual therapy, uh, vestibular rehabilitation, um, balance therapy. There's there's a whole uh, there's a whole variety of different therapies depending on the on the neurologic findings that we uh, come up with in the in the evaluation. We may never touch the patient's neck. And, uh, and just do uh, vestibular rehab and visual rehab to try and get these uh, patients better to you know, give them a better quality of life. So, Dr. George, you mentioned you're looking at vision and eye movements, but yet we're talking about the neck and cervical dizziness. So how do you connect the two? Uh, some people get dizziness because they have abnormal eye movements and the, and the eyes and the neck uh, are connected. And so a lot of times patients will get um, dizzy, just turning their head to the right or to the left because it's connected to the neck. So once we fix the eyes, a lot of this neck pain and dizziness goes away also. So Dr. George, are there any complications or is there any confusion out there with people who have cervical dizziness? Well, the, the one big thing is that uh, uh, if it's a true cervical dizziness, okay, this should go away relatively quickly. Uh, but if the if this dizziness is happening because of uh, aberrant eye movements or 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 a head injury, these the people might think they're dizzy, but they may have a neck and a brain injury. So you need some uh, a good evaluation to determine, is this a brain injury that's causing the dizziness, or is this a neck injury that's causing the dizziness? So uh, this is um, 
basically what our expertise is and what we do here. We can we can differentiate between the two, whether it's a neck injury or a, a brain injury, and whether we need to do vestibular or visual rehabilitation versus musculoskeletal rehabilitation, or both for that matter. Okay, well, it seems like the big point is that just because you have a neck injury doesn't mean that it's only a neck injury, and you've really got to find someone who can not only analyze your neck, but also analyze your inner ear, analyze your vision, analyze your brain, and really analyze both your brain and your body to figure out where the dizziness is coming from so it gets treated appropriately. That's exactly the uh, uh, that's exactly what we do here, well, Dr. Traster. So. Well, thank you so much, Dr. George. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us today. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank you.